ruggedness of the ancient Kimberley landscape took its toll last year on my vehicle with some unexpected mechanical issues. Not one to back away from a challenge, I have returned to the East Kimberleys to finish what I started, to explore the less travelled places into a land that is diverse and often mysterious, a land that I have come to love. Buckle up as we lock it in low range and kick it up a gear on our latest adventure. Although we ventured deep into the East Kimberley previously, this area still has a lot more on offer to the avid tourer. I do have plans to push new tracks later in the series, but since my last visit I have changed a lot on my setup. So I'm looking to do a shakedown run not too far from Wyndham before driving into the unknown. I'm heading for the old Kurunji stock route. This is an alternative four-wheel drive route linking Wyndham and the Gibb River Road. Last season, we made it to Digger's Rest. Now that's the station where the movie Australia was filmed. And I really wanted to do the nearby Kurunji track, but I did have some car dramas and didn't make it. So I'm back in series nine, ready to go. And I've got a familiar face with me. Let's check in and see how Ronnie's going. Hey Ronnie, thanks for joining me on another adventure in the Kimberley. Oh mate, the last one was so epic that I thought oh, I'd have to come back again and help you get through this rugged Kimberley country. I tell you what mate, it's looking a bit dry compared to the last time I was up here. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't get much rain at all up here, so the land's going to be pretty dry. Never mind, it's still beautiful looking at these hills here. Are you geared up ready for the crunchy track? Oh yeah mate, absolutely. Can't wait to hit it. I heard it's pretty cool. Veering off to the right here is a turn off to Digger's Rest, but we want to go straight ahead to the crunchy track. And as with all outback roads, if you come across a gate, make sure you leave it how you found it. This one's closed, so we'll open it up, pass through, and keep heading on the crunchy track. <laughs> Rocky start to this track. <laughs> this is super exciting. Got a great crew with me. Well, the sun is going down really quickly. What do you reckon we find a camp? Actually, do you know of any spots not too far from here that we may be able to pull up at? Yeah, mate, there's a place called um, Slady's Creek. It's a really nice bit of campsite there. It's down on the marsh flat, so I get out of this bit of hilly country here. Alrighty, that sounds like a plan. I know we would have liked to have been further along on this track, but at least we've made a start on it. And when we pull up for camp tonight, might have a bit of a chat to see what we've got in store for the trip this time round. Yeah, mate, I, I tell you what, I've got a good adventure waiting ahead of us. Yeah, but I think that's more for the campfire talks tonight. And I'll throw a bit of ideas to you and see how we go. Sitting around a campfire, sorting out your itinerary, it's pretty hard to beat. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Ronnie has a campsite in mind, not too far from here. The sunsets up here are to die for. It's absolutely beautiful. And to be honest, it'll be a good time to pull up for camp because it's starting to get a bit dark and this track is starting to deteriorate. So you really want to be fresh on a track like this. So we'll hit it again tomorrow morning. It's so good to be back out on the tracks, Ronnie. It's been 12 months since I've seen you and there's quite a bit of stuff that I didn't actually get to do last time I was here. That was kind of my fault. My uh, car yeah. broke down, you know. It happened. <laughs> it does, yeah. It kind of did it in a big way, didn't it? Yeah, a bit of an epic journey too. I mean, it was all about surviving after that. Yeah, Trying to get it. out, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. no, yeah. back for another round. And what have you got? 
planned. Like the, we've had, you know, a couple of hours on this track already, yep. and we've got another day to go, and it's been beautiful so far. Yeah, yep. Uh, the rest of the sleep. track you're going to find um, it'll definitely put the uh, camper trailer to the test. You know, you'll get used to it after being so long, not full driving, mm. then getting back into that's it. That's right. This is probably a good track to ease it back in. You yeah, know, and give stuff it everything like that, so. a shake down. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'd love to show you guys uh, the King George Falls. Okay. That's one of the places I really wanted to take you guys last year. Yes. But, you know, but given the. Uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah, given the circumstances, we had to scrub that off. But this year we've got a good chance of getting out there. All oh, right. And so. that's your mob that's there? Yeah, there? yep. That's yep. up there back in Balangara country. Okay. Okay. We're just going to have to make our own track the rest of the way. Okay. All right. I've got a new machete, so I think I'll put that to you. Yeah, I could use it too. <laughs> Cut the bugs down. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, but I did come to town with another piece of equipment. One with yes. an outboard motor on it. It was hard to miss. <laughs> it's so, a good size, the new oh, boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't wait to see that on the on the water and yeah. stretching the legs. So. Yeah, we'll get that out and yep. do some adventuring on that as well too. So. I think we're going to have a fabulous trip. Yeah, yep. we've got a good fire here too. Uh, actually, that reminds me, you up for some stew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Definitely hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ronnie's plans for stew tonight are about to go on hold. What we have here is a really nice looking barra. He's so fat and the perfect size for eating. We've literally been here for five minutes. We were sitting around the campfire and Tim, one of the traditional owners, turned up with a barra to give us. He's actually part of Ronnie's family and he's the traditional owner of this area around here. And this fish has come from the creek directly behind me. So we're gonna scale him and then fillet him and then I think Ronnie has a recipe that we'll share with you later. Part of this recipe is actually to separate the fillet from the skin. That's what I'm doing here now. And just look at the size of these fillets. One side of this fish would feed four people. He is a good size. We've got the fillets off and we've got the skin separated as well. And I think Ronnie has like in mind for what's left over here. There you go, Ronnie. Thank you. What we'll do, we'll chuck him in this bag here, mate. Yep, sure. Ronnie, we really appreciate your family sharing this fish with us. Thank you so much. We always share stuff and, you know, very appreciative of um, the, our ancestors giving us this fish. So I'd like to give back as well. Yeah, we really appreciate uh, this fish as well, Ronnie. We have good yep. use of it, so thanks very much. Absolutely. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, I'm pleased to see you here. Day two back in the Kimberley and what a sight to wake up to. away from a nice little camp spot. There's a mint spot, the cattle all around us and so much wildlife around here. The bird life on that water course is amazing and to have a fresh barra come out of that water from Tim last night was unbelievable. We'll weave through the Coburn Ranges today. They're just lit up spectacular. The wind is up slightly but sun is out. It's going to be a great day. Really enjoyed that camp last night, Ronnie. It was certainly a hub for wildlife, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That beautiful campsite there is called Sladies. As you can see, a lot of bird wildlife. Um, and yeah, even a little centipede last night. <laughs> Bit of danger there. Yeah, I noticed that. That's why it's good to wear boots out here now. Does the track deteriorate a bit up in front or is it pretty much like this for the most of the way? Yeah, mate, up ahead the road starts to deteriorate a bit more. I haven't been on this track for a couple of years, and so it could be much more worse than the last time I took it. And as you get closer to the foot of the hill, and it starts to get challenging from there. Spending a bit of time in this area, Ronnie, you was telling me about some barramundi fishing that you guys used to get up to. Yeah, as a kid coming out with my family, uh, my dad and mum and the rest of the gang, we'd come out here fishing, camping, uh, having quality family time out here. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't have thought there was barra in that creek back there, so that was a bit of a surprise. 
Yeah, it's a bit deceiving, like I'm um, right on the edge of the marsh flat here. And this place, yeah, definitely teeming with barramundi. Well, I uh, tell you what, growing up out here, I never get this complacent about the beauty of this country. Even though I grew up around these hills, every time I come back, it's so magnificent, especially in the morning. When that morning sun hits that cliff face, with that beautiful red, red color and a bit of white, yellow, oh, just beautiful. Yeah, never get sick of the Coburn Range, it's such an iconic spot. And kind of like, you know, really this type of scenery, the terrain, kind of sets the mood of this is what the Kimberley got to offer, this is what the true Kimberley is. So, yeah, come out and enjoy it with us. Now this track, it's only a short drive from the town of Wyndham and it's about 84 kilometers in length. So you could complete this track in a day, depending on the conditions of the track, but we like to take our time. So we're gonna camp our way along it. And the reason I've chosen this track straight up, uh, first up on the trip is because we wanna give everything a good shakedown. You probably notice I've got a bit of different equipment this year. I've got a different style camper trailer. I've got a new tray on the back of my cruiser, a new quad bike. So there's been a few changes and it's always a good idea when you're still close to a town that's got services and supplies to do a shakedown run, see if there's anything that needs changing or fixing, which is exactly what we are doing before we head further into the Kimberley. Over the past 10 years, the Australian camper trailer industry has really felt the effects of the Chinese imports merging onto the market. Now, our ever enduring Australian manufacturers have had to sharpen their design pencils and offer the market a point of difference. Now, the result of that is a genius idea. It's a hybrid camper. Now, what is that? That is a cross between a traditional camper trailer and a caravan and this is the option that many have chosen to tour around Australia in so when lifestyle campers approached me and said do you want to try out our hyper camper I'm like I think I actually do I want to see what all the hype is about agility off-road is really key to me it's really important so we're 33 inch tires dual shocks and independent suspension i think it's going to be unstoppable off-road and doing this crunchy track straight up it's going to give me a great baseline to work with to see the characteristics of the trailer off-road i'll give you a better tour of it later on in this series but for now i'm just warming up to it just getting used to it and so far so good i am pretty impressed I was reading a couple of travel books about this track, Ronnie, and there's not a lot of information on it, but I'm actually really surprised. It's, it's quite diverse with the ranges, the water courses, and now these open plains. It's been really pretty. Yeah, it definitely is, especially with the uh, Coburn Range on the side of you everywhere you go. So you're basically driving right around this hill here. Yeah, beautiful. And do these plains have a name here? Yeah, this little spot here, when I was growing up, this used to be one of the uh, number one fishing camping spot. Called it Yerawa. Just off on our right here, about uh, maybe a K and a bit, is the Pentecost River. Just beautiful camping down there. It's actually a hot spot for Minmin lights. Uh, you see a lot of lights out here, uh, the Minmin lights. I don't know if you heard about them. They're like these uh, lights you get to see out in the bush like uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of the uh, unexplained kind of stuff. Okay, well that sounds really interesting. The only thing I've seen is uh, big fat pelicans. Oh yeah, I've just seen them. First time I've ever seen them flying a f uh, flock like that too. Never really seen so much pelican in my life. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful. Like I said to Ronnie, haven't really read much on this area and it's only a short little track but it's a lot packed into it. You've, you've got to kind of check it out been on the open plains for a while now and we're going through this massive section of a road out track before we head into some denser bushland so yeah gonna get a few different angles happening here with the camper trailer first time I've put my hubs in on this track we're probably halfway through it so that gives you an idea of the conditions on the track no 
nice and steady. That camper trailer just follows me. It's quite quite good actually. Woo! <laughs> had a sharp turn and just had to allow myself enough room to bring this camper trailer around. All good. Hey Ron, can you do me a favour and just watch my other side for me, my passenger side? Yep, no worries, I'm just driving up down there. No, mate, you're doing good. Alrighty, I can't see absolutely nothing on that side, I'm afraid. Okay, when you're ready, I'm proceeding forward. <laughs> Yep, keep going, you're gonna do all right. Nice and easy, slowly, slowly. Yep, carry on. Very slow there, mate. Yep, no worries, it's gonna wanna push that way a little bit. Yeah, you got it, mate. You're over it. Nice, nice work. Passenger side gonna drop down shortly. Uh, take it nice and easy. Yeah, yep, you got your driver's side just hanging off at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ronnie, do you reckon you could just tilt my mirror up a sniff? Yeah, that's good, thank you. Yep. Oh, maybe you don't want to see, actually. <laughs> yes, you got a bit of a lean, but if you went straight for a bit, you got the, um, the road goes like that, so your two front tires should be level as you're going along. Thank you, thanks. And um, it'll just allow you for the um, that wheel on your driver's side to run along that edge. Yeah, and yeah. And then come in so yeah, this nice. one here is looking pretty good. So okay, sweet, yeah. Um, yeah, cool, just through that part. Ah, thanks for your help, Ronnie. Appreciate that. No, no worries. <laughs> nice work. Very nice yeah. work. Cheers, mate. I don't think you're going to need my help through that. You're going to walk all over that. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I am now really starting to get a feel for this new setup. Oh, yeah, so it gets even more interesting over there, I see. Won't look too far ahead on the track. We are nearing the end of the Crungy track. It hasn't been what I expected. And what I was told last year that this is quite a, a nasty, serious off-road track. And I don't think it's been that at all. In fairness though, they haven't had a really good wet season here. So the track hasn't really deteriorated from those rains. So the track isn't actually too bad. The last section is the harder part of it, which is what we're doing right now. But it's been a beautiful drive through following these ranges. Just caught sight of the Pentecost River crossing up in front there, Ronnie, and downhill descent down into it. It's been an interesting track. It's been a great shakedown for everything. Yeah, mate, but it's good to see what your camper trailer could do, eh? It's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it's been a fun track. And uh, there's plenty more for us to explore, plenty more tracks. You up for it? Oh yeah mate, I'll be up for that. Up for more adventures. Just scouting out a camp, it's right on the river here. I think this would be a good place to stop for tonight. For anyone visiting Wyndham, the Crungy Track is a definite must do. You can do it in a day if you like to, but it's best to take your time as we did and camp along the way. You'll see a lot more there. And big thank you to you, Ron, for guiding us through this track. And I reckon this is a great spot to set up tonight. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> for sure. It's a decent sized river with some crocodiles I hear. Yeah, yep. Well, this, this part of the arm is the salt and just up there, on the other side of the crossing is uh, fresh water. And they inhabit it both. Areas, yeah, don't, don't be fooled by their name. <laughs> Salt can go and look fresh. So, yeah, yeah, too, right. Well, <laughs> shall we set up camp? Yeah, absolutely. All right. High fast to good day. Yeah. <laughs> good day, countrymen. How are you going? It's Ronnie here. Tonight on the cooking segment of Top of Down Under, Penny's got me to try out my new recipe, fish crackle. So it's pretty simple. What I do, fish skin, you need a bit of fish skin. This one is the fresh fish skin from the barramundi my cousin gave me the other night. Plain salt. And while I was rummaging through the uh, lifestyle camper trailer, found this, garlic salt and also some chili salt. So I'm gonna mix it all up, see how we go, and um, hopefully it'll come out really good. So the first thing we do, take out all the skin. Still need to defrost him, put him in there. Some warm water. Put it all over the skin, fill him right up, and then salt. Put a good batch of salt in the warm water, and then after an hour, come back, check up on it, and then you take it out from the water, leave it on the bench, 
dry it up and then we'll put some of these salt on to see if they can match together and make it a bit more hot, a bit more tasty. So leave that in there for an hour and I'll come back to it. Okay, countrymen, left it in here for a little over an hour because it, it was a bit frozen. So what we're gonna do is take the fish skin out of the bowl of the salty water and we want to cut a little bit of pieces off there. And because the uh, skin is still slippery, as you can see, I'm not gonna use a knife, but a trusty cooking scissors. Also, uh, just a tip for you, you only just want the skin of the fish, not too much of the meat. So if you can, take that meat off the skin, like so, and then we'll start cutting him up. There we go. And only small map size pieces, I reckon. <laughs> So once you got these type of little pieces, what you want to do then is get the uh, paper towels and dry the skin. So when you put the barramundi skin into the hot frying pan of oil, the water doesn't mix in and uh, spit out at you. So now that the skin is nice and dry, get the salt and you dab a bit more salt over the uh, skin of the barramundi. It'll help it when it's in the uh, oil to really dry and get very crispy. And what I'm gonna do is try these other two salt. I'm gonna try the garlic salt, make another batch, try the chili salt, and see which one tastes the same and might get crazy and mix everything all up in one. So, see how we go. Ronnie has been cooking up a storm with his crispy barra skins and I've got the fillets left over here and sometimes the best thing about camping is to keep it simple. So I've got a pre-made batter mix here. We're going to sacrifice one of our precious beers, mix it together, coat up these fillets and cook it alongside Ronnie's crispy barra skins. So just cut these down to size, make it a bit easier to fry them up. The next step is just to make sure these fillets are nice and dry, so a bit of paper towel will be fine. And this is actually just half of the fish and it's going to feed our whole crew. Alright, pretty simple this next step. Put in half your batter here to start with. Crack open your beer. Just half of it. We may want to sample the rest later. Give it a little mix up. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that consistency. It's time to batter up our barra fillets. We've got both barrels on this bad boy, both burners are fired up. We'll just add some oil in, heat that up. Oil's ready, simply coat the fillets in your batter and place in your hot oil. Easy. Some of these first pieces are nearly done, I can grab them out of the hot oil. I'm going to continue to do the rest of these fillets here. And as soon as I'm done, I'll let Ronnie have a go of this hot oil and he can finish off his crispy barra skins. It's going to be a good feed tonight. Oh, the batter's looking beautiful. Can't wait. Now, just going to try and deep fry these ones. See how we go. Slightly hungry, I don't mind helping out. They smell amazing. That looks about perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, do you want to try this recipe? Certainly do. Get that one. That one, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that. Tastes flaming amazing. So good. And it's just like crackling. Yeah. But it's barra. Barra skin. Yeah. I love the seasoning you've put on that. Oh, thanks. Are you going to try one? Uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try one. Mm. Oh yeah, it's going to pinch that recipe from you. Oh yeah, simple as. <laughs> Don't mind sharing. You can take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, do you want to try one of these uh, beer battered ones? I would love to. Mm. For my side of things, the fish fillets in the beer batter is really easy to do. You can get a packet mix like that from a supermarket. But if you would like the recipe for Ronnie's crispy fried fish skins, hit the website. All the details will be there. It is one delicious recipe, let me tell you. The Crunchy Track has been an excellent testing ground for all the new equipment that I've got this year. And like Ronnie said, we've got plenty more locations to go to. So tune in next week as we hit the tracks. We've got so much more to show you. Thanks for watching, guys.